Well, guys, the console wars are in full effect. Back in March, Microsoft gave us the Xbox Series X hardware reveal, and Sony took their sweet time when it comes to their hardware reveal from back in June. And now we've actually gotten a couple of the different gameplay reveals under our belt, but the question still remains, which console is going to be faster? You know, we at the channel here, we've looked at the PlayStation 5 from a bunch of different angles. So today we're actually gonna steer our gaze over at the Xbox Series X, and we're actually gonna make a couple of you fanboys cry. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great day. Like I said just a second ago, we've covered the PlayStation 5. You know, we've made a mock-up PlayStation 5 build with current gen PC hardware. We've looked at the RDNA 2 architecture and what the performance could look like with their performance per watt claim. And heck, we've even dove into the smart shift technology and seeing how the PlayStation 5 is gonna squeeze out some of that extra performance. But today we still have that question, which console is going to be faster? But before we can answer that question, we need to look back at those specs and see what just each of these consoles has powering it. Both of these next gen consoles are gonna be utilizing AMD's current gen Zen 2 CPU architecture. And we're not really gonna cover that a lot today. We're gonna to be mainly focused on the graphics card or the GPU. And that's where they're starting to get a little bit interesting. Both are gonna be using the next generation RDNA 2 architecture from AMD, but they're gonna be splitting up the core counts or the compute units, the CUs, and they're gonna be changing up the clock speed for the GPU a little bit in order to satisfy their needs. The PlayStation 5 is gonna be using 36 of those RDNA 2 CUs, but they're gonna be boosting up to about 2.23 gigahertz, which is a pretty fast speed. But on the other hand, Xbox is going to be using a massive 52 compute units, but they're going to be clocking those down to about 1.82 gigahertz. And that's where the debate's going to be down in the comments. You know, are we going to get better performance with fewer compute units at a faster speed or more compute units at a slower speed? In typical Turk fashion, you know, I like to look at current gen hardware and try to answer these questions, but unfortunately there's just no graphics card out there from AMD that has that many compute units. And then when you try to fashion up some multi GPU Frankenstein system, you know, you'd need to combine a 5600 XT and a 5500 XT and you know, the AMD driver software just isn't that stable and DirectX 12's heterogeneous multi GPU that doesn't work really well at all, but then it hit me. We don't have to take a direct comparison at the compute units. We can look at the ratios between the clock speed on the GPU and the compute units. And we have two graphics cards that satisfy that. We've got the RX 5500 XT and the 5600 XT. Of course, these two graphics cards won't be a direct comparison against what's the Xbox and PlayStation are going to have, but I do believe this is going to give us a good indicator of how things could go look going forward. So straight up, the RX 5500 XT is a very lean offering from AMD. It only has about 22 compute units, but it tries to make up for that by boosting up to about 1750 megahertz on the game clock. And, you know, we're going to be using the MSI mech oc variant i think it's a four gigabytes and it's a pretty decent offering it's right at about 180 bucks or so so it doesn't unfortunately boost faster than 1800 megahertz in our testing but you know it's pretty solid for a entry-level 1080p graphics card on the other hand the rx 5600 xt has gotten a lot of love on the channel it's got 36 compute units and in order to make this a good comparison for the video we're actually going to down clock the graphics card to about 1375 on the boost clock so that it matches the amd specification as listed on the website but again this is the msi 5600 xt mech OC. It's a six gigabyte variant and I found that it boosts or overclocks really well. So we should be able to get some pretty good ranges on frequencies and core counts when it comes to these two graphics cards today. Of course, the 5500 XT and 5600 XT, they're not like really powerful. So today we're going to be sticking to, you know, 1080p and some 1440p gaming. And we're going to be using games that are a little bit older than what's going to be released on the current gen hardware in order to hopefully get past some of these different uh, issues with these two graphics cards. 
And today we're going to be running uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, as well as Strange Brigade. These are all good games. They all scale really well with AMD hardware. But we're also going to throw in a couple current gen games. We've got Red Dead Redemption 2. We've covered that a lot in the past. But we're also going to be running a new game, F1 2020. It was released a couple weeks back. And I'm kind of doing some background experimentation to see how that compares against like F1 2017. Our first chart tonight is going to be actually showing this direct comparison against the 5500 XT and the 5600 XT. And it's completely obvious that the 5500 XT, even with the higher clock speed, just it doesn't have enough compute units to actually keep up with the 5600 XT. Uh, we see FPS gaps on a lot of these games ranging from 25 FPS up to a staggering 53 FPS in some of the newer games. And if we actually take a look at the comparisons chart, if we, you know, normalize around the 5500 XT, we are seeing performance gains on the 5600 XT with the more compute units and slower clock speeds in the range of 25 to 34% improvement. And heck, even some of the newer games, we're seeing almost double the performance regardless of the clock speed. This data might not have you convinced. Maybe there's some magical combination of lower core counts and higher clock speeds that just makes sense. Well, in order to go that extra mile, I took both of these graphics cards and I went to about 1675 megahertz, which is actually the game clock speed for a lot of 5600 XTs on the market. And I went down as low as I could go according to the driver and I went to about 850 megahertz. And since I had two 5600 XTs at my disposal, I went ahead and did a multi GPU comparison to see what a massive 72 core count or compute units looks like. And I just want to show you what that chart looks like. The 5500 XT clearly needs all the megahertz that it can get. It scales up pretty nicely across all the different games we're going to play today up to a theoretical 1950 megahertz, which unfortunately we just can't hit with our graph, our 5500 XT today. And this performance is actually matched by the 5600 XT at an amazing 1050 megahertz on the GPU clock. What's more impressive is just how much better the 5600 scales when, it, when you start increasing the clock speed since it has those extra compute units. And in a crazy twist, when we double the compute units in that multi GPU configuration, <laughs> there's actually a couple games that start to see the performance gains taper off and flatten which, you know, could be a problem for the Xbox going into the future. An important note, I did switch over to 1440p as my resolution, mainly because that's the resolution I have on my gaming computer, but it also gives us a good mix of data. So let's dissect these observations just a bit. So if we're looking at current gen hardware, as well as current gen games, and maybe some AAA games, we clearly see that 36 compute units is a good match and that by increasing the frequencies a bit, we see things scale pretty well. And this is both good and bad news for the PlayStation 5. You know, right now 36 compute units does good, but you know, in the future, you know, software developers might be wanting to leverage more hardware resources and might have some new tricks up their sleeves. And with the PlayStation 5, there's just not gonna be any extra horsepower there to leverage. So we might see some games start to cut corners and all that, which, you know, may or may not be a good thing going into the future. But for the Xbox though, you know, there is gonna be extra horsepower there. So at launch, there might not be a massive difference when it comes to gameplay experience. But I do see that the Xbox has a little bit more capacity as well as clearly extra performance is gonna be available to it right from the get go. I know the state is not a definitive answer as to if the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X is going to win, but I do believe it shows a solid indicator that the extra compute units and the slightly slower clock speed for the Xbox Series X definitely gets the advantage when it comes to performance perspective. But I do want to say that I do think the PlayStation 5 is going to be able to deliver on their 4K 60 FPS marketing. You know, there's still clearly a lot of optimizations that can be done. And if you watched our RDNA 2 video, I really do think this new next gen graphics card is going to have the horsepower that's going to propel that uh, console into the winning circle. But still, I think the Xbox Series X just has the extra horsepower, it has the extra capacity, and as developers start to leverage these systems better, I do think they're going to see the extra resources as, as an advantage, and we're going to see some slightly better 
you know, features when it comes to gameplay. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If uh, you got any questions for me, let me know down in the comments or hop into my Discord. And I stream all this stuff to Twitch. I've been testing all this stuff live. So if y'all want to see some of this magic happen, you know, hop on over to twitch.tv slash theturk. But again, thank you guys. I hope y'all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.